first of all, now this is really important with the brother carriages, but place the cover on so that you can see what you're going to be missing. With the brothers, there would be an open rectangle here and a circular place here and another rectangle here, and you'd say, okay, i got to match this up with slides and levers. This one's simpler. This one's really simple. But that's how you start your process. Now let's talk about this dial. First of all, we know that this is where it lives, but if you'll notice, it won't go down that way, and it won't come up this way. There's a tang on a slide that corresponds to this track right here. And you have to rotate it so that the end of that track matches the little tiny slide tang similar to the one for the stitch dial that goes in that track. Now let's back up. I'm going to hold this up. Maybe it'll be easier. Here's the neutral position. You can see the dial is loose. Now this is what goes on that you can't see. When you... Let's talk about this dial and what it does. First of all, if you'll notice, there's a keyway in it, a keyhole, and a stob on the post. So this obviously goes down just like that. Here's one of the real contentious parts of this reassembly is this spring right here. And it's actually two fingers of the same spring. And it's quite stiff. Very stiff. And it's got to go in this notch right here on the dial. I'll hold the dial up and show you. It's got to go in that notch. Hold it still, point the notch, and I'm going to zoom in and then back out. Okay. All right, and now we're back out. And then more normal. Right. But let's talk about how this works. Now, once you get it down to this position, it's quite helpful to get a small screwdriver, lever against the dial with a little bit of pressure down, See how it popped into Can place? Can we do that again with me in a different spot or you, your hand in a different spot? Yeah. I just did it again. You want to do it one more time? Let's do, because that's the hard part. All right. I'm going to get a little small flat tip screwdriver here that will let me back up a little bit and do the same thing. So here we go. We're going to take it off. And it's just as hard to get off as it is to get on. But now it's off. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are you with where the camera can see? Yes. All right. So we match the keyhole to the stop. Now we're down to here. What we want is a little downward pressure here. And we're going to flip that out of the way. The fingers. Both of them. No, just the top one. Just the top one. By levering against the dial itself. And see it drop down on there. Okay, that was good. We could see. Now, it's still not below the second one. I'm going to hold it up. Can you see? Yes. Let, <laughs> let me zoom a little. Okay. All right. Now back out we go. All right, and here we go. Same operation. A little downward pressure. Lever against the dial itself while you press. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I know it's... We're down. See that on this carriage, the left position, I, is intarsia. The center one is normal knitting. And the right one is S for slip. All right, now we'll go over the dial itself. Center position. And it's not actuating either one of these spring-loaded slides. Now, if we go over here... That's our slip, S. Right, to the slip position. And I will show you in a minute that these two are moving and these two are not. Now we come back and all four, and you know there's two of them. There's a top and a bottom on each side. Now both of them move for the intarsia position, the top two and the bottom And a quick two. reminder to those who haven't done a lot of intarsia knitting, what that's going to do is move the needles out every row to upper working position rather than the normal working position where the fronts of the needles are flush with the edge of the bed. And with 
the needles in that position. We lay the yarn over whatever needles we want to knit, red, blue, pink, etc. Knit across. The carriage knits them in, but it's not carrying the yarn. It's just knitting them in and returning them to forward position. So that's why the interior settings look right. so different. That's right. Now I'm going to get this off and then we'll put it all back together, but I want to show you how that dial actually works because you never get down in there. But if you'll notice, when I go to raise the dial, can the camera come in right there and see that spring finger yes, stopping the dial from raising? Yes. All right, that's what you do. You're not going to be able to get in here because the cover is still on. Cover has to go on with this dial, so you're not going to be able to get inside. So we lift, we press, I'm you not. need to eliminate us. I didn't understand what you mean. You're not going to be able to get inside. We are inside. So I what? know. But when we went to put that dial on, we had the fingers out here where we could work with them. Mm -hmm. When we go to put it on... Oh, with the cover. With the cover. So that was simply demonstrating right. how it will be on the inside, but we won't get a look at it. That's right. See, this cover and this dial section must go on together. Uh-huh. So that's where it gets tricky with the springs. And so you I was align them as you just showed us. Right? But now here's what I was talking about. Here's the track right here that this little tiny slide, let me pick it up where I can show you, this little slide post right here, can you see it? Mm -hmm. That's what goes in that track. And the only way it'll really go in is to get it right here where you can see there's a... Tip it up, the wide spot, yeah. yeah. There's a wide spot with an edge, and it'll also go in when this right here. But you see, that's what was holding us up, was lining it up so that that little slide, which you sometimes have to manipulate from inside the carriage, but we're going to get into that right okay, now. Okay, watchers, do not panic. This is the hard part. That's right. I've seen Jack do this a million times, and I've actually done it a couple myself. And your first time through, it is going to seem as elaborate as what he just showed you. But it becomes a quick and practiced movement. It's not really that bad. Correct. Here we go. The cover and this dial must go on together. So you start with them like that. Line up your keyhole. Now, it looks like we're okay, but you can see the spring finger that's supposed to be on top here isn't there yet. So now, here's what I've got to do is reach in to that spring finger. So what Jack is doing now that we can't see very well is exactly what he showed you with greater clarity, but he's got to work around the case. And it's in. Yes, it is. See what I mean, folks? It isn't that bad. It's just real easy to not see what you need to do. That's right. There's a little slot right in here where you can get this very thin screwdriver in to see. So practice... I mean, it's like raising a puppy, firm but gentle. Right. But practice with the cover off, getting that dial on. So you kind of know how much downward pressure and when and where to do a little wiggle. Okay. All right, I'm putting in the second of the two side screws that hold the cover on. And notice the right hand has never turned loose of the cover so that I could manipulate it. One screw here. One screw here. So he's keeping pressure with his hand, so keep the parts together. That's right. Just a finger inside the dial and then split one of the posts. And you can manipulate it quite easily to get those screws started. Because you've got to lean it on this side to get this one in. And then lean it on this side to get this one in. So our center dial is next. And again, there's a keyhole right there for that center post. The tricky part here is above that keyhole it's open. So you have to get below the keyhole before the dial will actually rotate. 
So it's helpful to look at what we're doing here. Here's the keyhole and the key section. Here's the center of the post with its stop. And what it tells me is here's the... You're so, going to need to rotate your okay. left hand siding it. Okay. Here's the path for our stitch dial slot. All right. We have to get the post lined up. And here's how we can do that. Notice how it's moving all by itself. It's because I'm manipulating the, the slide so from the bottom. it's not a Ouija board. No, it's not a Ouija board. And again, you just showed me that it works better all the way to the outside, and it's going to catch right there. Wiggle. wiggle. <laughs> you didn't even have to wiggle it. Also, here, click, 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 click. Put yourself back in the picture, but... If you don't hear click, 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 it's not actually adjusting. Right. That's not even positioned. I know, but I'm saying there's a level between the front of the dial activator and the actual but stitch style. The point I'm making is we've heard from a few people who got it back on seemingly correctly, but it wouldn't adjust stitch size. That's right, but now that's what I was going to do. We turn it over. We see, see the it. movement? we see it adjusting the stitch size. So if every time you stitch, it's either really tight or really loose or really unpredictable, suspect the dial is not correctly seated. Right. It's something we've, we've heard of pretty often. We have. And the next two things to go on are the stobs for the handle. Notice the threaded end, and that's what goes in here. So in order for that threaded end to get there, it's got to go through the outside of the casing. And it's pretty obvious. The handle casing. Right. It's pretty obvious since the handle lays down that the slot is to the case cover. Yeah. And I will go ahead and stick those in. The only tricky thing here is that you need to start them both before you trap them by putting one all the way in. And you'll pretty well know if it's caught the threads because it'll pin it. But if you'll see, there's some positioning that you can get to. Yeah, that part is pretty straightforward though. Yes. And we're just about ready to put the sinker plate on and knit now. Knit, 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 knit. Okay, here comes carriage number two, assembled by me. I've done all of this before in small amounts, but I don't know that I have ever completely assembled one single-handedly before. So we'll see how I do. I've sped myself up to double speed so it doesn't make the video excessively long since you've already seen this done once. I will point out something I don't know that we've emphasized. We do need to adjust that little stake or stob that sticks up in the back so that it slides into the channel Jack showed you. And you saw me make two tries at that. Also, the usual position that the dial sits down is past number 10 stitch size. And it usually if you adjust that stop, then set the dial down past 10 and wiggle gently, it falls right into place. Any other position you would have to force it and that wouldn't do anybody any good. That's me checking to make sure I'm lined up and I'm rotating the stitch dial. Make sure that I'm seeing the needle path adjust. And I'm ready to get the handle on. One of the screws on the handle took me a couple of tries. It didn't want to seat correctly. And that can happen. It will feel aligned when it's not perfectly. This is the one that gave trouble. And I think I finally went back and did the second one all the way and then adjusted this one. As always, don't force it. If it's not aligning, it's not aligned. 
and you don't want to strip the screws, you won't do yourself any good. That was me using a tiny screwdriver to align the holes. And that screw went in just fine. But this is really it. Once you get that cover on and the dial down, there are the two screws that hold the cover down to the main part of the carriage and the two that go into the handles to keep them on. And that's it. This is simplicity itself. That's me realigning again. That side gave me more trouble than the whole elaborate business of the dial tends to do. But we are just about to wrap it up. This time it tightened down nicely. And it works. Those are the nuts that will hold on the sinker plate. 